Hello, you guys. It's I, I'm very thankful that you are all here. And I'm really thankful that we are in this situation. Uh, we're, we're, we've always wanted to make history right here in this program at Troy and be a proper reflection of the institution we represent. And, and I think we're doing a good job of it right now. Um, it's been an up and down year. We started out underdogs. We're trying to end this as champions. Started out 0-6 at the beginning of the year. Uh, fought our way through, kept the faith. And here we are in a very prestigious tournament battling uh, in the Fab Four. So it's very interesting that we get the next game at home. We're thankful for that. Uh, I'm not even sure how that happens, but thankful for all the powers that be and the decisions that were made to get it in Trojan Arena. I think it's bringing a lot of awareness and positive things to our campus, which is what we want to do through our women's basketball program. Uh, the matchup with Minnesota is an interesting one. Uh, we really haven't played a team that's that's like them this year with their size. And um, we've, we've played some high level teams, but I think Minnesota is a little unique um, in several things that they do and a lot of their abilities. Um, we have advantages over them. And of course they have advantages over us. I think um, other than their link, their advantage over us is, um, you know, they, they play high level teams night in and night out to have played Iowa, to have played UConn, to have played teams like that night in and night out. That's just a different look than what we have uh, in the Sun Belt. Uh, so we know that they're very skilled and experienced at performing at high levels. Uh, we also have advantages. We, we play fast. We put up a lot of numbers. We rebound really hard. And we play a different style of basketball ourselves. So it's going to be a great night, great matchup. And we're thankful to be here. Hey, Coach, so late night last night, you guys said you got into the film room or looking at everything. You know, so what are you doing today? What's the team doing just getting ready for tomorrow? So this morning we divided – this morning the players had to go to class. <laughs> so they're in class. They've been in class all day. Uh, we divided up responsibilities. Some coaches were working on the scout. Some coaches were working on um, actually trying to, to to delve in with the Troy's administration and 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 get the word out and and get students to game and things like that. And we all had different responsibilities that we're working on. Um, and then as soon as I get off the Zoom, we have film and scout in the in our film room with the team, where we'll break down for them what Minnesota is like and what we learned about them. Some of them watched the game the second half with us last night after our game. Some of them came in the film room and watched it with us. But we're just going to kind of present the film, the scout to them and and our game plan. Then we'll go out on the floor and have a very brief practice because, again, to win this tournament, you have to win three games in, in a week. So we know that keeping legs under us are important. We'll have that brief. Um, we'll have that brief practice. We're getting get together tonight to eat dinner. Um, and we just want to build excitement and pride about representing our university in this prestigious tournament. I mean, we don't have to say too much. They know that this is very special, but we just have some things for them and some stories to tell and some motivation to do tonight at dinner. Okay, coach, hopefully y'all can hear me now, sorry. Yeah. Yes. Um, you talked last night a bit a bit about how critical it would be to immediately start scouting and looking at this team. Just talk about now a little bit about that game plan and some things you found out early that you're going to have to call on the girls to kind of be able to fix and handle. So we watched the second half of their game last night against Wyoming, and anybody watching the game could see that they play a very slow style of basketball compared to us. So I'm always wondering – my, the thing I'm most concerned with is, is what are our team's perception of the other team? It doesn't matter what the coaches know. It, it matters what the team believes. So last night they got the view after we played a very fast game against Monroe that they're just, you know, they're slow it down team. That was their first impression. They're big. They're, they're slowing things down, but they're, they have a lot more of their game than that. Um, we think that we can use our game plan that we had against North Carolina A&T. They had a 6-3 post player that was a big presence for them in the paint. We think we can use that um, to spur on a little bit about what we do when their big girl is in the game, which is fronting and having people behind and all that kind of thing, all things like that. Um, but they have so much more to their game. They have different lineups, different, different intricacies they can put in. They can almost change the type of basketball they're playing depending on who's in the game for them. 
And so we have to make the team aware of all those things, which goes much deeper than what their first impression was of the team by watching a half last night against Wyoming. Uh, just kind of following up, you said you're going to give the team motivation. What is that motivation? Well, we can't reveal all of our secrets, but uh, again, we're going to eat a nice meal together. They're going to hear about um, how proud a lot of people in town and on campus are of them because um, we're kind of in our own world. I mean, other than going to class, they see other people. But other than that, it's straight to the arena. And 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 we've been really consumed with this for really several weeks now from the Sunbelt tournament to now. And so we would just want to them to hear things like an outside perspective about, you know, there's people that are proud of them. There's people that really care about 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 how they're doing. And, and we want them to, to hear that and to know that. Awesome. Coach, that kind of goes into something we discussed a little bit last night amongst other journalists, just the getting people into Trojan Arena. Like a couple years ago, I know we used to pack out an entire building and I know it's it's difficult time and people are having some things they want to do. But just talk about the importance of, you know, people knowing that these girls need their support. We're watching the Angel Reese, the Flavie Johnson and just women's basketball is growing so much. So just reiterate for our Trojan fans how important it is to have them there. So we feel like because of the national attention on women's basketball now, which it's in many cases, it's more high, it's more watched than men's basketball at this present moment, 4.9 million watched the last Caitlin Clark, you know, big game. But, um, and it's trickling down to so many other areas. We feel like we can kind of get on that coattail and ride and, and start drawing in the viewership that really that this program deserves. I mean, LSU is second, South Carolina's third to Troy women's basketball in the nation and rebounding. It's Troy women's basketball, but but the word isn't out much, but we feel like we can, this can help br bring attention, not only to our program, but having it here on campus to our beautiful campus. If you look at my social media post today, I was making posts of how beautiful our campus is and come see it and come to the arena to see the basketball game. But, but back to the basketball question, um, it is so hugely important. We, our fans have been showing up, but but what we've, what we've been working on today is getting our students to come right across campus and be in here. And we what and um, you know this was a tough week because uh, you know we have a lot of other important sports going on. We had Greek week this week. Our Greeks had things and responsibilities every night this week and every day. But what we're trying to do at Troy and our one Troy mentality is bring them all together and see if some of the events that the Greeks were doing off campus, maybe we could bring them into arena, maybe at halftime. I don't know, but I do expect there to be and, and all the other athletes that aren't playing to, to be here um, for, for many reasons. Not only do we want that for uh, the support of our players, our players feed off of that. I feel like we can't lose when we have that support in our arena, but also we feel like, Look at this opportunity we have. Let's say we go win a national championship. We want as many people as possible to have this memory, to share it with us, and to feel like they were a part of it. Because every person who is in Trojan Arena at 6 p.m. on Wednesday night, when we get that win, they are going to be a part of it. They are going to help get that win. Just like the ones that were here Monday night, they're all a part of this win. And that's what we want at one, with one Troy, is we're all working to do special things together. Coach, this is Kyle of WNIT. Can you hear me? Hey, Kyle, I hear you loud and clear. Right on. Thank you. Um, having been uh, at the heartbeat of this event for years and years now, one of the big things that happens is the team has to sort of deal with the, the shock <laughs> that they're not in, in the big tournament and that circumstances often were not very pleasant to end up being in the WNIT. You guys have a, an upset loss in your tournament. My question to you then is how, uh, just walk me through your, your guys' process of sort of stealing yourself and getting your heads right for the next opportunity, because it's not like they just snap their fingers and say, yippee, it's the WNIT. Kyle, very interesting you should say that. It's so poignantly what we have dealt with, the most, the, the biggest the biggest thing we've dealt with is, you know, we start the very first day when our team comes together in the summer drawing on the board where the NCAA tournament is and working backwards, what dates you have to play, what you have to do to get in the tournament, how many games you'd probably have to win in the, in Sunbelt Commerce and in the tournament there. We worked backwards while we, while we had the 50th toughest pre-conference schedule. The reason we did that 
is because we were trying to get a good seed to go in that, right? So when we lost out of that, that Sunbelt tournament, we were not going to the NCAA tournament. I told my coaches before we left that locker room, because I knew we had an automatic bid to this tournament. I told my uh, coaches that, guys, this is uh, the, the coaching staff who can mend hearts the most because everybody going to this tournament is going to have experienced a loss. Everybody. But ours, I felt like, was was really hard. It was really hard and we, we had those expectations. And with the most beautiful story has come out of this. We've understood that the, the thing we have to do is pick hearts up off the floor and get them ready for the next opportunity. And I can't tell you what we have learned through this experience about the value of taking it the most advantage of the opportunity that's before you. Because like we've talked about, if we would have won the, in our Sunbelt Tournament Conference, which that's always our goal, but if we would have won it, we might have gotten in the NCAA tournament and faced a foe in the first or second round that's, you know, really, really, really super tough. It, it would take a lot of miracles for us to beat them, okay? You could have you played it in Iowa in the first game, Connecticut. You could have. We've done, we've done it before. We played Mississippi State, who made it all the way to the Final Four that year. Um, but we got in this tournament, and it's such a prestigious and historic tournament. And um, so many beautiful and wonderful things are still unfolding for us being in this tournament. The best memories that we've made all year for the whole year, and some of my players for years of being together, the best memories have come in these in these moments in this WNIT tournament. And so it's a lesson for all of us. When you're aiming for something, something really high, and you don't quite meet that, there are so many great things that can come along the way from you striving for that because we feel like us playing that hard schedule, striving to get an NCAA tournament, and get a good enough seed to, to get a good draw there, that has prepared us for this WNIT tournament. We would not trade this experience for anything. It was a lot of broken hearts to begin with, and now, it's again, it's turned into some of the best mem basketball memories we've ever had. And, you know, I hope that I get opportunities, and I know I will get opportunities to speak on this tournament when it's over, win, lose, or draw. You know, I saw a lot of my colleagues, a lot of my close friends in basketball uh, opted out of any tournament other than the NCAA tournament. And I would like to talk to them about, in my opinion, what a mistake that is. Because what if, what if we would have done that? We would have cheated our players and our fans out of this great experience. And truly, I've, I've won championships and I've been a part of special situations at every level I've ever been at. And this has been a wonderful, great experience. So we're just thankful. Does that answer it for you, Kyle? Yeah, I'm sorry, I had it on mute. I just said, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Do we have any other questions for uh, head coach Andrew Rigby? If not, we're going to turn it on over to Brent Jones, who will be uh, answering a couple questions and making a statement uh, on behalf of uh, Troy University. So thank you all for being here. What a historic time it is for our uh, Trojans with women's basketball uh, to be able to play in the fifth round, the fabulous four, the final four, whatever you may want to call it. Uh, versus uh, Minnesota on uh, this Wednesday at 6 p.m. And so very appreciative. I heard Coach Rigby uh, and what she talks about. She's a competitor, and every single one of our student athletes is as well. And so, you know, uh, to be able to to win the way that we have done, uh, obviously twice at home, then going on the road in a really tough environment as well, uh, it's been incredible. The WNIT matters. Uh, it matters to our fans. It matters to our student athletes. And we're really looking forward to being able to host, to be part of the final four, uh, you know, one of four uh, on Wednesday versus Minnesota, which is a really, really good basketball team. And I think people are going to be able to see the contrast and styles between you slow it down, fast, up tempo, and, and those type of things. And so, but I would tell you this, um, anytime that you get to lace it up, uh, in front of your home crowd, uh, it, it really means a lot. And so we're pulling out all the stops uh, for this Wednesday to make sure that uh, Trojan Arena is is rocking. Do we have any uh, questions for uh, Mr. Jones? Yes. Hey, Brent, hope you're doing all right today. Um, doing great. You know, I know you haven't been – AD too, too long here at Troy, but just talk about being able to experience this moment 
with this team, as coach said, is so deserving of the support and everything and just um, being able to make, you know, such a historical run. Talk about you being able to be a part of this as, as AD at Troy. It's simply incredible. And uh, I will tell you, it, it means a lot. And so we talk about the beginning of the year with our student athletes. It's called the W4. It's winning in the classroom, winning on the playing field, winning in the community and winning in the stands. And we've really been able to do that. And so under the leadership of Coach Rigby, uh, being able to participate in the, the WNIT, being able to participate. Uh, I remember three years ago going uh, to Austin with us playing Texas A&M uh, during COVID and how surreal that was for us to be in postseason play, but you could only have 10% of the, the actual attendance there. And so this is, this is never lost in us, being able to host a postseason game at home to really galvanize your students uh, and Trojan Nation. And so I think this has come at a wonderful time. It really has. My next question, I'll just ask you what I asked Coach earlier. Mm -hmm. um, getting the support, we watched how women's basketball did such a, a turnaround this season along with all the talent that we watched in the NCAA tournament and SEC or whatever conference. But just talk about how important it is for our student athletes to feel, you know, Trojan fans all across Trojan Arena and the students and just to feel like they have support. You know, people say this a lot, but what a time to be alive, right? And this this is true. You really think about it. What what a time to be alive, to be a, a college sports fan, to be a women's basketball fan. And so I really think it can transform a lot of things. So I've seen it happen at previous institutions uh, where being able to host a deep run into the WNIT really buoys uh, your expectations. And, and one of the great things we have here with Shanda Rigby is she's such a leader, such a confident, uh, you know, comparing cash uh, – passionate leader, but she is one that the expectation, you know, is we're going to compete in postseason. We're going to compete for conference championships. And you see um, that's what we have done this year. And so I really do think that our student athletes, I will tell you this, uh, one of my favorite uh, first off, the student athletes feel it. They, they feel it. This past year, we sold the most tickets we've ever sold uh, for the history of men's and women's basketball. We've had the highest attendance for men's basketball. We've had the highest attendance for women's basketball. And we're just going to continue to add to that. And so our student athletes, uh, we want them to have the best experience possible. But there's a memory that I had. And uh, it was when we were playing Arkansas State and it went in overtime. And uh, May May, our great point guard, uh, we eventually ultimately won. It was in the, the front end of a doubleheader. And as soon as we won, she jumped up on the scores table and just was elated. And so that's what you want to see. You want to feel that passion. You want to see that energy, that connection. And so we're looking forward to having a great crowd here this Wednesday. Uh, there's not too many times you get a chance as a group of five for us to be able to host a power five institution and for us to be able to host uh, Minnesota out of the big 10. I don't ever want that to be lost. Uh, it means a lot and it's going to mean a lot to our fan base. It's going to mean a lot to uh, our, um, our student athletes. 